concerned about Israel's continued policy of forced evictions and demolitions by the possible excessive use of force by Israeli security forces against Palestinian civilians. The NAM shares its serious concerns expressed by the High Commissioner over the Israelis' continued policy of forced evictions and demolitions. The OIC shares the High Commissioner's concern over Israel's continued policy of occupation, including enforced evictions and demolitions in the occupied state of Palestine. We should not lose sight with the humanitarian tragedy of the Palestinians under Israeli occupation. The inhumane blockade on Gaza still continues. The repeated violation of human rights by Israel, the occupying power, in a barbarous fashion, would like to welcome the constant and unswerving position of the High Commissioner to protect the rights of the Palestinian people. This Council must firmly condemn the violation of human rights, the human rights of the Palestinian people. To I give the floor next to the United Nations Watch. Madam President, the purpose of this Council is human rights victims and respond to urgent situations. Yet as we meet here today, three weeks have passed since Syria gassed to death hundreds of its own men, women and children, and still the Council closes its eyes, refusing our call for an emergency session. The world deserves to know. Are innocent civilians attacked by their own government with chemical weapons, not human rights victims? Is the most horrific crime of the 21st century not an urgent situation? Yes, the Council will discuss Syria next week, but that was scheduled months ago. And yes, High Commissioner Pillay mentioned Syria, yet she avoided any condemnation of its murderous regime. Madam President, why is this monstrous crime being treated here with such apathy, banality, and triteness? Where is this Council's moral outrage? Where is its sense of urgency? Can a human rights body that ignores this atrocity be deemed credible, effective, or in any way relevant? The United Nations, which constantly demands accountability, must ask itself, why were the killers of Damascus time and again promoted by this organization to key positions awarded a legitimacy they never deserved? When Assad murdered 20,000 in 1982, why was Syria sitting here as an elected member of the Human Rights Commission and then re-elected? What message did that send? And even after the current massacres began, why was Syria elected in 2011 to UNESCO's Human Rights Committee? Why is Assad still there, despite our repeated appeals? Finally, why is it that of the ten agenda items for this session, only one specific country is listed, and it's Israel, whose hospitals, as we speak, are quietly treating dozens of Syria's injured victims? Madam President, let us state the truth. If the UN allocated just one hundredth of the moral outrage it uses against the only democracy in the Middle East, murderous dictators like Assad might have been shamed, isolated, and weakened instead of elevated, celebrated, and strengthened as champions of human rights. Thank you, Madam President.